Hello and welcome to this video. I'm so sorry it's taken so long to get out. I've been working so much to try and get this done. Uh, but it's finally here. I started this a little bit late. Obviously, I've just come back from the Channel Islands. So, a bit of a time crunch to get this custom done and obviously didn't make it in time. But as you can see, starting with the Venom, the Sony body mold as well. Getting rid of the heads and the hands, don't need those. And then working my way through the sanding grits just to remove the weird kind of veiny texture that obviously the movie version had. Starting with 60 and working right the way up to 220, uh, I do skip 100 occasionally because I just thought it was a waste of time. Also worth pointing out, I did sand down the neck because I wanted to get a bit more range out of the head while keeping the head small because he's kind of got a pin head thing going on. So they're getting rid of the veins as best I can. There's still some of them showing through at the end, but at least they're not nearly as obvious as they were to begin with. I won't bore you with the whole sanding process, so I'll just kind of skip through these ones. But you can imagine just how long this took. Uh, this footage was originally an hour long as well, and I've managed to edit all of it down to under 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, this, <laughs> again, this took a long time to make. I also ended up breaking the legs while trying to remove... I ended up breaking the hips while trying to remove the legs. So I had to cut away, reinsert the actual peg system, glue the broken bit back down, and then super glue it to try and fill it back out. But it's not really noticeable, so it ended up working quite well. But now just speeding through all the sanding for this because... Again, I'm sure you don't want to be sat watching me sand all this. Saving the feet for later. And I do use the rotary tool on these hinges, which I end up not needing to have sanded at all, because if I just looked at the reference image, they need to stay black. So those hinges could have just been left untouched. Uh, stupid me for not checking that beforehand. And there we go, there's the arms. Again, I've not done too much with the forearms because I'm going to be adding some sculpted spikes to them. But to try and make sure the paint adheres to these bits, bring in the rotary tool again. Just grinding a little bit off of it. Don't need to take loads off, just enough so the paint can stick and it won't rub away. Uh, that would work if you were given 24 hours for the paint to cure fully. I did not, so the paint rubs off anyway. But these are also the smaller ones for his lower set of arms. Exact same process for all of that as well. Only I didn't sand the uh, rest of the arms because I didn't need to. Because they're already flat. Taking away forearms toe privileges. He doesn't have four, he's only got two, so we'll take away the set of five. Resculpting with some green stuff. Just making a triangle, rounding the edges, and then blending it back into the original foot. You can see that there's one toe, and there's two toes. And I'll do the same for the other foot as well. And that will give us the feet completely done, and no need to worry about those now. Now for the hands, uh, I did also thin the pegs down so they were easier to peg into the Venom body mould, because they've got quite a thick mushroom on them. Taking out the middle fingers, and then taking away the sculpting detail that kind of gives away that there were two fingers there. Sanding down just to kind of smooth out that cut line. And then bringing one of the fingers back in, preferably the thicker one. Cutting it down to the correct size, just so it kind of takes the same contour. And then super gluing that in place. Not leaving it long enough, dropping it, getting glue everywhere. And taking another attempt. Doing it twice. It's not perfect, but for a time crunch, it'll do. And now bringing in his biceps. Just to kind of differentiate that there is a t-shirt on, I'm going to do the actual cuff. And I didn't show the entire sculpting process for this, because I don't think this would have been so interesting, but just using some super fine mill apart. Uh, this was pointless, you'll see later I have to tear all this off. But here are the spikes. Fairly happy with how these came out, these ended up being quite seamless. Uh, these ones, not so much, I don't know quite why I had such an issue with these ones. But in order to save trying to get bikes so small, 
I'm going to take his toes. And his toes work really well for forearm spikes. So, saves me a bit of hassle with those. Now, obviously, there needs to be a way to attach these lower arms to the body. So, I'm taking a 3.5mm drill bit, which is around about the same diameter as the actual peg. And a 65 A countersink would work perfectly, but I don't have one. So, just using a bigger drill bit to kind of round the edge out. You can see it chewed it up a bit. So, I'm taking the rounded ball for my rotary tool just to kind of smooth out a little bit more. And I'll use that on the inside of the Omnitrix just to make sure it contours to his shoulder a little bit better. You can see I've also cut down that peg just so it doesn't collide with the body so much. And then to prevent that even further, I'll sand this body down using a heavy sanding bit on the rotary tool and using those grit sponges that you saw before to kind of smooth it out a little bit easier. Just like that. And now you can see I've removed the Milliput collar. For whatever reason, this specific bit didn't cure. The rest cured fine. So I'm taking some EVA foam and I'll heat treat it so it seals it and kind of brings in all those edges and I'll glue that in place instead and that actually ends up working better. For the smaller arms I'm actually using long shots hands because he's got three fingers I'll just cut those knives out and perfect set there. Now obviously starting in Tinkercad as usual this is the only stuff I did in Tinkercad very basic almost like monkey kind of shape to it and the ball joint for the head and then I put all this into Blender and work it from there. And that's how I end up with this. This was a fair few hours just trying to get like a decent shape to the jaw. Uh, for whatever reason taking this human-ish face was quite difficult. But you can also see the eyes are inverted this time. I've done the outline and no internals. That's just so the yellow can kind of do the same thing it did with Grey Matter's pupils. Be dropped in and spread to the edges. The details of these teeth don't actually show up in the final print just because of how small it is. Uh, so that's on me for thinking they would. And now here is our printed head. Done on the Mars 4 Ultra, my favourite printer that I own for doing detailed prints like this. And there's the Omnitrix. Here are the three primers I used. Well, two primers and a matte lacquer. I used the grey so it was an easier transition from the black to the white, and then obviously the white over the grey just to finish that off. This is the red I used for his skin. And then here are the various airbrush paints I used just for actually dropping into areas. And then because it was quicker, I ended up using permanent marker just to draw his black lines. Uh, this black is actually the original 3D print. I did mask it off and then paint it red. And this is just a simple bit of giving him a little bit of eyeliner. Uh, I won't show you the entire thing for all four. So I'll just show you finishing them off for the most part. Uh, and I won't show you me doing the other head because, again, just too long of a process. Then using a toothpick just so I can drop this paint in. I do end up putting a bit too much there, so I'll take a little bit of that out. Just by using the other end of the toothpick that's got no paint on it, and that will suck a little bit out. And then I'll redisperse it into the other eyes. And that worked exactly how I'd hoped it would. So here's the other head as well. Done practically the same way, um, even using the toothpick to do the white of his teeth as well. Now, I want to point out, I put the biceps on wrong. Uh, the left bicep is on the right arm and the right bicep is on the left arm. And while that was originally a mistake, it works out very well because it keeps his arms further from his body, which means they collide less with his smaller arms that are underneath. Um, so if you are following this, I do recommend doing it. It makes it a lot easier to prevent the collisions between the arms. It also kind of broadens him out a little bit, gives him that square, boxy kind of look. And now I won't show the whole process of drawing these lines, Obviously the lines go over his entire torso, so I'll show a little bit of it, but again, I don't think you really want to be seeing me draw uh, black lines across a figure for 20 minutes. But you can see there, I'm going from a thin line and bulking it out a bit. It's easier to thicken the line than it is to try and thin it again afterwards, so I highly recommend just starting thin 
and working it out until it's the right size. Here's that EVA foam collar. Uh, you can see it actually works a lot nicer than the Milliput one does. So kind of a blessing in disguise that that Milliput didn't cure uh, for whatever reason, which is weird because the rest of that batch did. It was just that one collar that didn't. But there's a little preview of how the black lines up. Uh, I am keeping the holes in his back to do with Stinkfly. There was a really good comment about making the custom head and the wings for this figure. Um, however, I'm going to wait until I do Stinkfly to create some kind of uh, meshing of figures with this design here. Now with this, you can see he's practically finished. But as per usual, he's missing the final little thing. And that is, of course, the Omnitrix on his left shoulder. In regards to painting his feet, I realised I didn't cover that. Um, I did just mask off that black bit that runs across the middle between his heel and his toes. So that wasn't like a major thing that I've, I've missed. That was just a bit of masking tape that did that job for me. And I'm making sure this is relatively centred. And that is this custom done. Uh, now obviously I didn't give it 24 hours to dry because I've made this in essentially two days. So the paint's technically still not fully dried. Uh, and I do end up scraping it, trying to pose him. So I will be doing some more photos at some point later down the line when he's had some more time to cure properly. Uh, but for the time being, that's him done. I'll retouch the paint that I mess up. But yeah. I'm actually very happy with how this came out. When I first put him together, I wasn't overly pleased, but it ended up working a lot better than I thought it did uh, once like everything was finalized. You may also notice that his upper torso doesn't look like it's connected to the lower torso properly. That would be because it's not. It is now. Uh, while I was posing him, I realized that I hadn't properly clicked that socket together. So I did, and that's why everything seems to kind of flow a little bit better. But I know this was like most people's favourite character for me to do, this is the most requested one that I've had. So let me know what you guys think. I know he's a, a favourite of most people, he was one of my favourites when I was younger. I think I've actually got a statue of him from the Epic Aliens line, which I need to dig out from somewhere. But yeah, I'm very happy with how this guy came out. He is one that has to be posed, I don't think he works quite as well in a vanilla pose, just because of his kind of wacky proportions. He definitely needs to be in an action pose and I'm so glad I did this head. I think he's one of those that just needs to be showing a bit of emotion and it works well for this figure. And so now here he is with the rest of the ones that I've done so far. You can see I didn't fully unpose his arms because I plan on still taking the photo of the thumbnail but I did straighten his legs and straighten his body. And you can see he's Practically the same height as Diamond Head, maybe a tiny bit shorter. I did also fix Accelerate off camera at some point. I need to do a little bit of touch up to make it look a little bit prettier, but his tail is now in the correct position and he doesn't need a display base to stand up. So, uh, you guys were correct. It did definitely need to be lowered down uh, and it works so much nicer now that I've lowered the tail. But this does also make me want to redo Diamond Head. I kind of wanted to redo him anyway, I've been suggested some good bodies to use for him if I did do a V2. And I don't like that he's taller than forearms, he's meant to be about the same height as Heat Blast. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.